The transition of factual content from print to radio to TV was a difficult one, and what I find most interesting is how, in that transition, the scramble to create interesting visuals to go with said facts has become a lot more desperate over time. In a book about, say, the Second World War, you got a massive block of text containing a ton of facts and maybe a picture or two here and there. But when you're translating that to a visual medium, you've somehow got to have appropriate visuals to go with all of that massive block of text. You can't just have someone read it out accompanied with a static picture for 10 minutes. I too, in fact, know the hair pulling that comes with trying to conjure up an interesting visual every 5 seconds or so in a video. So I've had to start drawing my own over the years because you can't find everything that you need to go with a bit of audio on Wikimedia Commons. But also, with TV factual content in particular, you've got to ensure that you have enough interesting visuals to fill an hour's time slot almost exactly down to the second. It's not like with a book where your lengths can vary, everything in a broadcaster's schedule has to be uniformed. And I recently stumbled across hands down the funniest example of a major TV broadcaster struggling desperately to think of enough interesting visuals and facts about a topic to fill an hour's time slot that I have ever seen. It's called The Truth About Calories. It was on the BBC and is presented by a man who's apparently a scientist and it just features some of the hammiest clutching at straws that I have ever seen in a TV documentary. Literally the only thing that you learn in this entire two minute long sequence here is potatoes grow in the ground and potatoes are a source of starch. You'd think there's more there, but there really isn't. I've never dug up a potato, which is what I'm surrounded by here. But it can't be that hard, can it? Really, the only reason that we're in this field at all is because it's something interesting to put in the frame that's got a vague relation to our premise. This thing that I'm holding here is called a potato, and potatoes are made up of calories. So this is about 150 calories. And in this field, there are about 500 million calories. Wow, that's such a big number. Look, there's another big number. And it means... something? Look, everybody, that's the number of calories that are in that item of food. Absorb the piece of information. Absorb it. The calorie is just a measurement of the amount of energy in our food. And like most things in life, there's a sort of Goldilocks amount. Too many, and we get fat. Too few calories, and we literally starve to death. Yes, Mr. Scientist Man. If you eat too much, you will get fat. Piece of information absorbed. Later, we go to a supermarket ready meal packing facility, and literally all we learn there is, this is what a supermarket ready meal packing facility looks like. There's steam coming out over there and some enormous spinning discs over there. and production lines and, and just the odd familiar sight like a lasagna or uh, or bangers and mats. Yes, Mr. Scientist Man, those are the things that are in the room that you're in. Look everybody, there are some ducks over there. And the ducks are going quack quack because that's the sound that ducks make. And you can also see in this shot, um, there's some grass. And didn't know if you knew this, grass is this green stuff that grows out of the ground. And look, over there in the back of the shot, you can also see some bushes as well. Piece of information absorbed. I remember this show that we used to watch in primary school called Come Outside, where this nice friendly lady and her dog Pippin would fly around the country finding out stuff like how crisps are made or how taps work or something. That program was meant for five-year-olds and was about nine times as informative as this documentary. There's this massive sequence about burning calories here where they set some foods on fire for some reason to, like release the energy inside of them into, like, I don't know, fire or something. I don't know, I'm guessing they did this because fire is a thing that happens in science when a science fact happens, and it proves by setting fire to some foods, we have proven that the truth about calories is that calories are flammable. Literally, they don't follow this with any relevant information. It's just, I like biscuits. Let's see if biscuits will make a bigger fire than the cereal or a smaller one. 
I want to find out how accurate those numbers really are. So I've come to an independent food laboratory in Kent. They're going to check the calorie count on some popular foods that we've bought at random from different supermarkets. John Griffin runs this lab. Write that down in your copybook now. John Griffin runs a lab. Hmm, I wonder if this is going to be on the test. I'm naturally a bit sceptical, so okay. I don't always trust labels. Can you tell us how many calories are in all this food? So, Mr Scientist, can you do the thing that we came here to ask you to do that you've obviously already agreed to by the nature of the fact that there's a camera crew stood in front of you? By testing them, yes, we can. We can tell you how many calories are in each of those products, yes. Oh, my God, really? I expected him to say no and they'd have to go somewhere else. So, yeah, after they do this test thing, we learn that the truth about calories is basically the number of calories listed on the packaging of foods might be slightly more than it lists. Or it might be slightly less. It depends, really. We all fuck up sometimes. And what you've got here is a group of people attempting to make an hour out of that sentence with some barely relevant general stuff. Potatoes grow in fields and have X amount of calories. Supermarket ready meals have calories on them. Let's film a man standing about in a factory for a bit. It'd be like making a documentary about the sentence, the cat sat on the mat. You'd have like, say, Matt Baker from The One Show going to a mat factory and going, wow, look at all these mats. This is what a mat factory looks like. Well, basically, we make mats and then they get sold in shops and then cats sit on them or something. Wow! So what you're saying is, mats are made in factories and then sold in a shop. Wow! That's so fascinating! I've learnt literally so many things today. It's making my brain hurt. So, random shopper in a shopping district, you own a cat. Does it like to sit on mats? Um, yeah, it does really. It just sort of likes mats, I guess. Oh my god, really? That's so fascinating! Anyway, now we're going to do a scientific test using science to see which is better at sitting on mats, cats or dogs. Well, speaking as a scientist person from the University of Science, I think that cats will be better at sitting on mats because cat rhymes with mat. I mean, why would cat rhyme with mat if they didn't sit on them? The saddest thing is, I bet you thought to that, wow, that sounds like a ridiculous idea. But someone has actually made a show called Cats vs Dogs, Which is Better. It's on iPlayer right now. Like, for fuck's sake, stop conforming to British stereotypes, BBC. You're making it look like it's true that our country's quaint and boring. I mean, what next? Are you going to make a competition show about who can sew the prettiest doily and- Oh, fuck off! Seriously, are you kidding me? Anyway, so here's what I learnt from the truth about calories. Basically, this is what a man looks like in a field. When you set food on fire, that food then becomes set on fire. The number of calories on packaging may be slightly wrong. And if you eat too much, you'll get fat. Wow, I will treasure these pieces of information for the rest of my life.